Hello and welcome to our sequence of videos on hypothesis testing. In this video, we're going to talk about the one sample sign test, which is a non-parametric equivalent of one sample Z test and one sample T test. Let's get started. A one sample sign test is performed when we want to compare the median of a single sample with a hypothesized median. And what are the assumptions involved in case of a sign test? So two key assumptions that we've discussed in most of the tests stay here. First is, that the sample should be collected randomly. Second is the independence of the observations within the sample. So the observations within the sample are not supposed to be connected in any way. Another key assumption that we've been seeing in all other tests, which is not applicable in case of sign test, is the assumption of normality. Sign test does not assume normality. Instead, it utilizes certain properties of binomial distribution and median, because this is a test of median. Let's get started with a problem statement. In any organization, the IT support team plays a crucial role in addressing and resolving various technical issues faced by the employees. One key aspect of their performance is the time taken to resolve these system issues. The objective of this study is to determine if the median time taken by the IT support engineers to resolve employee system issues is significantly different from 15 minutes. Notice it is not saying it is greater than 15 minutes or less than 15 minutes. It's saying, is it different from 15 minutes? So with our experience by now, we should be able to say that this is a two-tailed test. Based on the data provided on the time taken for issue resolution, conduct an appropriate test at 5% level of significance. So if we note down what information is available with us, we know what is the level of significance. Alpha is 5%. How do we write our hypothesis in this case? The null hypothesis is that the median time to resolve is 15 minutes. And the alternative hypothesis is that it is not 15 minutes. It may be more, it may be less, we don't know, but it's not 15 minutes. Now the sign test has a very different kind of a test statistic compared to the test statistics that we have seen so far. It says it's a minimum of positive signs and negative signs. So we'll spend some time understanding this from here onwards. Let's understand what exactly does it mean and let's go through a step-by-step -step process of calculating it. So step one in computing the test statistic is that from every single observation within your sample, we have to subtract the hypothesized median. So let's keep doing that parallelly. So here is our data. And the hypothesized median, as stated in the problem, was 15 minutes. So from every single value here, we need to subtract this value of median. I'm going to copy this everywhere else. And this is the difference that we've got. Notice in case of a sign test, the magnitude of the differences is not at all important. All we are looking at is the sign of difference. So whenever it is negative, that's counted. Whenever it is positive, that's counted. Let's move to the second step. The second step says, discard the observations which are same as the hypothesized median. Count only the positives and negative values. Store the total count of positives and negatives as n. So let me zoom in here. And let's follow what it's suggesting. It's suggesting that we should discard those values which are same as the hypothesized median. So in our case, there is only one value which is actually 15. And of course, if the value is same, the difference for that value would be zero. So we can discard this done. So now we are left with 14 observations. We started with 15 observations, but now if I re-index this, these will be 14 observations. Now what we need to do is we need to count the number of positives and negatives. And we can easily do that in Excel with the help of a formula. So let's say if this value is greater than zero, then we will put it as positive. Else, we will put it as negative. So this one is negative and we can see the rest. So how many values do we have? Total of 14 because that's the number of observations we have now after removing the one which was the same as the median. And now let's look at the next step. Next step involves counting the positives and negatives and storing them separately. As we can see here, count the signs of positives and negatives and store them as S positive and S negative. S stands for sign. I had already applied the formula in this sheet. So we've already kind of counted the positives and negatives. So we have out of 14, we have six positives and eight negatives. And the test statistic is defined as the minimum of these two. So the minimum, of course, out of six and eight is six. So we got the test statistic as well, which is essentially the step four listed here. We've already done this. 
So we've come to a stage where we have our test statistic now. We already know the value of n is 14 here. I can note it down. We have to find out the critical value. We'll solve it both ways. We'll solve it using critical value as well as p-value. So how do we get the critical value? Now, in order to get the critical value, we will have to understand the distribution. Which distribution should be applied to get to the critical value and p-value? Now, let us spend some time understanding the importance or relevance of these signs. We are talking about our test statistic as the median. Now, median is a point in the data which divides the data into two equal halves. So ideally, if we are referring to the median, then the number of positive signs and number of negative signs around the median, below the median, the negative signs, and above the median, the positive signs should be equal because median is the midpoint. That's what the definition of median is. Now, in case our median or hypothesized value here is much less compared to the population median where the sample has come from, we should be able to see more positive signs and less negative signs because these values will tend to be greater compared to the median. If they come from a population which has a greater median, we will get more positive signs and less negative signs. On the other hand, if the population from which the sample has been collected itself has a lower median, then when we take a difference, when we subtract the median, the hypothesized value from this, we will get more negative signs and less positive signs. So in a neutral way, from a null hypothesis perspective, I would expect the positives and negatives to be equal and not different because we are checking for median. That's what our null hypothesis was for equality of medians. But if so is not the case, then we will be observing an imbalance in the positives and negatives. So how do we go about calculating the p-value or looking at the critical value? We will first have to understand the distribution which can tackle this kind of situation. So here's the kind of problem statement we have that out of n observed differences, what is the probability of finding less than or equal to s differences? This s is nothing but our test statistic. Given that the null hypothesis assumes positive and negative differences occur with equal chance, that is 0.5. We have 14 observed differences. We are trying to figure out what is the probability of finding less than the test statistic kind of differences. Now, this has a strong resemblance with what we do in binomial distribution. Let's have a quick look at binomial distribution. So binomial distribution is basically a discrete distribution. It's not like normal distribution, which can attain any value. These are the four critical characteristics of a binomial distribution. There are n trials, that is fixed number of trials. Trials are independent. For each trial, there are only two outcomes, success or failure. The probability of success or failure is constant over the trials. Let's understand point by point, how is this going to help us? There are n trials, that is fixed number of trials. In our case, n is the total of the positive signs and the negative signs. So we have fixed number n, which for the particular problem was 14, but we can otherwise also calculate it. The trials are independent. Now, this was our fundamental assumption. We talked about two assumptions on the random samples and independence of the observations. So this is a given. Now, for each trial, there are only two outcomes. In our case, there are only two possibilities. Either the sign is positive or negative because we are comparing every single value with the hypothesized median. We are discarding the cases where a given value in the sample is same as the median. So we are left with only two possibilities. This condition from binomial is also satisfied. Now the last condition, the probability of success and failure is constant over trials. As per our null hypothesis, because we are working on the medians, this is a property that the chance of being above the median or below the median is equal. That's the very definition's median. So this very much satisfies all the requirements that a binomial distribution would have. Therefore, in order to calculate our p-value and critical value, we can very well utilize the binomial distribution. Now, coming to the critical value aspect of it, we have an Excel function called binom inverse. Notice, since we are performing a two-tailed test, we'll have two critical values because we'll be dividing the alpha region into two parts on two different tails. We've discussed this in previous videos. So we will have to place the alpha risk on both the tails. We can give the input here, which is the number of trials, which is 14, the probability, which is 0.5, and alpha, 
So the first alpha that we'll calculate will be 0 0.025, the bottom 2.5%. And this gives us the critical value as three. Now, there would be another critical value in this case, which is on the upper tail or the right tail. So the trials will be same. Probability of the positive or negative sign being observed is 0.5 as per the null hypothesis. The value of alpha here we're going to put will be 0.975. The calculations always happen from left to right. So we will have to put 0.975 in this case. And this turns out to be 11. So there are two critical values we got, 3 and 11. Now, what is the test statistic we had? The test statistic is 6. So anything less than 3 is going to get rejected. Anything greater than 11 is going to get rejected. But the case we have is like this. Our lower tail critical value is 3, and our upper tail critical value is 11. And the test statistic is in between. So as per the critical value method, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means that the median time taken to resolve the issues is not significantly different from 15. But let's see how do we actually solve this using the p-value. So for p-value, we of course have another function in Excel, which is called binom distribution. Now we know all the values that we need to check for. Our test statistic is the number that we are checking for. Our total number of trials are 14. Our probability as per the null hypothesis is 0.5. We are doing a cumulative calculation. So now we can hit enter and the value that we got is 0.395. But this is not the p-value straight away. So in Excel, if you're working on a one-tail problem, this is our answer. But our problem is a two-tail problem. In case of a two-tail problem, we'll have to double this p-value. So the answer would be 0.79, which of course is significantly greater than 0 0.05, which was our level of significance. So once again, as for p-value as well, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's quickly see how do we solve this problem in Python. So in Python, we don't seem to have a very good function for one sample sign test, but since we know it borrows the properties of binomial distribution, there is a binom test that's available. We're giving it the same inputs, the number of positive signs, the number of negative signs, n, which is the total of positive and negative signs, and we are calling this function called binom test. Notice that the test statistic in our case was the minimum of positives and negatives. n is already being computed here. P, which is the assumed probability of positive or negative sign is 0.5, and the alternative hypothesis is two-sided. Now, since Python has a provision to provide this input that we are doing a two-tailed test, when we run this, it gives us the exact same probability, which we obtained in Excel by multiplying the computed value with two. So this is the answer, and this is, of course, greater than 0.05, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So whichever tool we use, as long as the concepts are clear, you'll get the exact same answer. Hope this helps you understand the one sample sign test. It's time for me to sign up now. Thank you.